Welcome to the IREL Podcast. Are you sick and tired of real estate gurus pitching their next free construction deal only to find out years later they were completely wrong? Worried the next overseas conference you spend thousands to attend will only be used to sell overpriced lots and deserted developments? Join thousands of other international real estate seekers who are looking for their place in paradise without the sales pitch. Straight from your host, Taylor White. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Episode 15 of the IREL Podcast. I am your host, Taylor White. I am simply thrilled to sit down and speak with Armand Boise from Atitlan Solutions in Lake Atitlan, Guatemala, and we will get the true story on the Lake Atitlan real estate scene and have you coming away wanting to investigate its local property market further or cross it off your shortlist entirely and continue listening. Right now from Armand, you will learn why someone from France working for a French congressman took a one-year sabbatical and how he arrived in the Central American country of Guatemala. The exact reasons why Armand chose the beautiful area of Lake Atatlan instead of other popular locations like Antigua and Rio Dulce gives us the inside track on if money flowing in and out of Guatemala is easy and the current maximum amounts each month you can deposit into a local bank. Pretends he is Google Maps or Google Street View and breaks down exactly where he is recommending his clients to buy today reveals three buying opportunities he recommends for my grandma, providing exact price ranges of each and much more. And don't forget, if you are listening to this podcast and want to grab Armand's contact details, links on buying or selling Lake Atitlan real estate or any other show notes, head on over to IRELpodcast.com forward slash 15. That's IRELpodcast.com forward slash 15. Sip on a local Guatemalan rum, enjoy the beautiful sunset, and get ready to experience this amazing Central American location. In case you can't tell, I'm excited. Let's get Armand on the phone. Hey, Armand, it's Taylor White. I'm excited to have you on the IREL podcast today, straight from Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. So we can get to know you personally. Tell us about yourself and where your stomping grounds were before you ended up in Lake Atitlan. Hey, Taylor. Thank you for having me today. I graduated from the Institute of Political Science in Grenoble, France, where I grew. And after three years working for a French congressman, I decided to take a sabbatical year. And then, therefore, I started a trip, which was supposed to bring me all the way down from New York to Tierra de Fuego. After the U.S. and Mexico, I arrived in Guatemala to meet a friend who was working here for UNICEF. I have no clue about Guatemala. But as soon as I land, I felt a strong attraction for this country. The climate, the size, in the same day you can swim in the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, the people, the more I visited the country, the more I fell in love. And then I discovered Lake Atitlan. I realized that I had found home. Very soon, I found a piece of land and decided to develop it as a little condo for units, build them, sold them, et voila, I was hooked. <laughs> wow, great story. And so we can get a better idea of you professionally. Give us your brief resume leading up to working at Atitlan Solutions. Atitlan Solutions was founded in 2003. It was a result of several years of experience in the real estate sector. As I mentioned earlier, I developed a condo project from scratch of four units with land acquisition, plans, building, legal permit, and sell. And I realized that very few properties were adapted to the expat needs. And the units we built were two bedroom, one office, two bathroom, near town with views, sharing common amenities like a pool, gardener, and guardian. And they sold very easily. And also after that, we sell very quickly. From that, I built, open, and ran an hotel with my ex-wife, Villa Somaya in Santa Cruz. At the same time, building houses for Norwegian clients and doing some property management. Unfortunately, all this activity took a big toll on my personal handling in a divorce and I have to start from scratch again. This is where I decided to create Atitlan Solution with a pa Spanish partner, as we realized that there were needs related to real estate that nobody was attending professionally. And from there, I required enough experience to share it with my future customers. Great, Armand. Now we are getting more familiar with who you are, both on a personal and professional level. 
let's start to dig into your journey just a little bit. Take us back to your mindset. What were some of the reasons why you decided to look at other countries to begin with years ago? And then maybe which countries you were considering before choosing Guatemala? Well, to tell you the truth, Guatemala chose me. When I was on, on my sabbatical year, I didn't have any particular plans more than improve my language skills. And I was going to from north to south. I have no particular reason to stay in any place. French being my first language, I was able to improve my English that I've been learning in school and acquired Spanish that I was planning to go to South America. What attracted me the most to settle in Guatemala is the easiness of doing business, the friendly people, and the fact that I could see that my skills could be used to serve both the local and the newcomers making the bridge between Guatemalan culture and expat needs and way of life. Armand, listeners and I are always fascinated to learn about which countries people have considered and why. Now, let's delve deeper into Guatemala as a whole and then why you chose Lake Atitlan in particular versus other popular Guatemalan locations like Antigua or Rio Dulce. After arriving in Guatemala, I did some work for travel agencies as a tour guide and got the opportunity to visit and know the whole country. What fascinated me is the most was the very variety of landscape you could encounter in a very short time, uh, like highlands, lowlands, tropical areas. So when I land in Guatemala, you already land on the island and you are already 4,800 feet above sea level. Same for Antigua, same for Atitlan. And in one hour, you can go to the tropical beach of the Pacific coast, the four hours tropical region of Redulce, or the mountain area of Quetzaltenango and Cuchumatanes. So I love the easiness of moving around versus Mexico, which I've been previously, which require long day trips. At the highland share, the same climate, temperature, and uh, I fall in love with these, all these conditions. And what made me settle for Lake Atitlan in the particular is the easiness from, to get to Guatemala City. It's a two hour drive, two hour half drive on a very scenic road, divided highway with gorgeous volcanoes views and crossing uh, living Mayan culture villages. So I spent some time in Antigua. I like it for its social life, but it gets very busy on weekend and it, it, because it's a very, uh, favorite destination for uh, Guatemalan uh, living in Guatemala City. And um, Antigua was too urban for my taste. So I'm more attracted by nature and I love to swim in Atitlan. So for all these reason, reasons, I, I decided to stay in Lake Atitlan. Well, I personally haven't been to the regions you are talking about, although I have traveled a bit through neighboring countries of Guatemala, like Belize, Mexico, and Nicaragua. Through my travels, I am a firm believer in that I either get a place or I don't. Share with us some reasons why Lake Atitlan speaks to you. Well, Lake Atitlan speaks to me because, uh, first, it's very easy to access from the international airport of Guatemala City. It offers a wide range of restaurants in Panarachel, which is the entrance city of uh, Lake Atitlan. You have Guatemalan food, Thai food, Korean, Japanese, Italian. On the cultural side, it's not very rich as Antigua. But there is uh, enough expat and school of expat where you can get some plays sometime and some concert and some activities. What I like also, it's uh, affordable uh, lifestyle. If you are a city person and you like uh, all the commodities of a city, that's not your best de destination choice. Better to go to Antigua or Quetzaltenango or Guatemala City. If you like nature, gorgeous landscaping, if you get in, or like to get involved with the local community, uh, the Mayan, then yes, it's a place for that. We have gotten to know you both personally and professionally, reasons why you chose Guatemala and why Lake Atitlan speaks to you. But get ready, because now it's time for us to pick your brain on the local real estate scene and to get the juices flowing. We're going to do a quick round of what I like to call the real estate hot seat. We're ask you five rapid fire questions and you give me an answer in 15 seconds or less each. Armand, are you ready for the Lake Atitlan hot seat? Yes, I am. All right. What currency is real estate priced in? Always in U.S. dollar. If you pay it in Guatemalan currency, the Quetzal, it will be based on the exchange rate of the U.S. dollar of the day. Is owning property as a foreigner legal? Definitely. The only, only thing is depending on the property you are buying. You will, will have either rights of possession, which uh, like you can assimilate to squatter rights, a property, or you can also have the rental contract with the government. If your land is between the lakeshore and 200 meters back, particularly in the, around the lake and rivers and ocean. Can property be titled? Yes. 
is uh, in defined areas, you can have a title property. If you are buying squad or right, then you can make it evolve toward a property there. Can money flow in and out of Guatemala easily, or are there currency restrictions? Definitely, you can take out whatever amount of money you want uh, in and out as well. The only restriction we have nowadays is a deposit on cash. You cannot deposit in the same bank account more than $3,000 in cash per month. And as listeners know, Armand, my number one question, what is your favorite local drink? Ron de Sacapa Centenario, one of the best run in the world. It's, uh, it looked like very much as a French cognac, and sipping in it at the end of the day, watching sunset on the lake, it's made my day. <laughs> Armand, I'm a huge rum lover and know for a fact Guatemala has amazing rum and right up there, in my opinion, with Florida Caña from Nicaragua. Okay, Armand, you can now relax, but just a little bit, as you are off the Lake Atitlan hot seat. But it's time to zero in on the local real estate scene. Give us your brief synopsis on the Lake Atitlan real estate market over the last few years, where it is today, and then where you see it heading for the next few years. Well, like other places around the world, 2011, 2012 have been very hard for us. 80% of our clients are from the USA or Canada. So when the U.S. economy is going bad, we do feel it. Not right away. It takes a little a couple of years. Nothing was moving. The market was very dry. Real estate value has not been affected much by the U.S. crisis because we don't have much inventory and the property are, being, are so unique that they don't compete once against the other ones. Now, the waterfront property have been hugely affected by your natural circumstances, which is the lake has been rising 15 feet since five years putting a lot of lots and houses on the water. This phenomenon is not completely understood and we don't know how much the lake can still ride. Therefore, a lot of property have been tremendous loss in value due to the imminent lake rise and this affects what people are looking now in the previous year, meaning that the second row or land on higher grounds become more and more attractive, offering more security and with still the same great views. Armand, you have us sold on Guatemala as a country, Lake Atitlan as a location, and then its real estate outlook within the near future. Of course, you don't have a crystal ball. I sure as heck don't. No one does. But that is why I think it's so vitally important to get on the ground insight from local real estate professionals. And yes, I just use the words local and on the ground in the same sentence to drive home a very important fact. Armand, you are not some newsletter writer who might spend a few days in Lake Atitlan and then send out emails with hot buys calling yourself an international real estate guru. You are there in the trenches on a daily basis dealing with local buyers, sellers, agents, lawyers, and every facet of the real estate business. Armand, break this down even further for us. Pretend you are Google Maps or Google Street View. What street? neighborhoods or parts of the city are we talking about in Lake Atitlan? Well, since 2013, we experienced a strong market recovery. Lots of property have been changing hands, and the first being sold as the one under $100,000. Panarachel particularly, it's the entrance port of the lake. It's where you find most of the services and where you find most of the expat community. Properties that have been longing to be sold for three or four years have been sold this year, to a point where not much is left and we are experiencing a shortage of low entry property. Now we have seen a stronger interest in property between 100 and 250k. The main reason Panarachel is so attractive is the easy access and great variety of service. The second area of interest has been the north shore from Santa Cruz La Laguna to San Pablo La Laguna, pushing towards San Juan and San Pedro, where great lots are still available to a very affordable price. Armand, now that we have specific locations in mind, what types of properties do you recommend? And first, let me give you a few brief examples of what I mean. Are we talking about buying pre-construction units for a capital appreciation that we flip? Are we talking about buying completed apartments, houses, or office spaces to generate rental income? Or are we talking about buying land to either sell as is or subdivide into smaller tracts? Armand, give us a better idea of what you are talking about and recommending today. Well, when you consider what is available in terms of houses for sale, the inventory of lakefront lot or lot with you, I would recommend first to buy land and build your dream house. There are very few apartments to buy and houses centrally located in Panarachel. Land on the waterfront offer a great opportunity to generate income renting in as a vacation rentals. We have several clients that have very good return on the investment. When the economy is good, expect 65% of occupancy, as the list of vacation rental is very small comparing other similar destinations in Panama, Costa Rica, for example. 
The price for building in an area with car access is between $38 to $55 per square feet, and in areas only boat access, it can be from $64 to $85 per square feet, depending on the access and slope of the lot. Okay, Armand. Now, I'm going to hit you up with a two-part question that I know everyone wants to know, and you have to give us a general range, so you have some price points in mind. Here they are. Part one, what would be the price range of what we are talking about? Maybe give us a starting price point at the low end to a final price point at the high end, and Armand, just to clarify, I am talking about total purchase price. Well, you can build your two-bedroom house in an area accessible by car for under $150,000. Now, if you have to get by boat, count around $200,000, but you will have a million-dollar view. And then, Armand, we're going to transition to a part two. What would be the cost per meter or square foot? Again, maybe a starting price point at the low end, and then a final price point at the high end, just for a general range. Okay, cost per, per meter vary for low end and easy access, $350, $450. Now, higher end costs $650, $850, depending on location and, and finishing you, you want. And just to clarify, is that square foot or or per square meter? Per square meter. Okay, perfect. And for listeners like me, or used to dealing in square feet, divide the numbers you hear by 10.76, or maybe just a flat 10 to keep it easy, and you get close enough numbers to get an idea of what Armand is referring to. Okay, Armand, this is a question I like to call, what would grandma do? My grandma calls you up says she has X amount of dollars to spend. You know, you can't let my grandma down. Share with us three specific examples you would show her and explain why these make sense. Well, I would say, Grandma, you couldn't come at a better time and make a wiser investment. Depending on your budget, I would recommend her the following. To start with, it would be properties with easy access, as the one with only boat access might be challenging for certain people of certain age. So if you're looking up to $150,000, I would say to look into a new project coming on the market, which is right one block away from the main street of Santander, the main central street of Panarachel. It's a quiet neighborhood, three-bedroom house with two and a half bathroom, garden and views to the volcanoes. Now, if you're looking for more privacy and million dollar views, I would recommend Sunset Road between Panarachel and Santa Catarina Palopo. There you can build for yourself a great house with stunning views under $250,000. And finally, if she's willing to go more, for more space, but still very accessible, you can find in Santa Cana Palopo houses between $300,000 and $450,000 with large garden, either with lake access or not, with pool or not, but with always fabulous views. Armand, we are laser focused on specific areas of Lake Atatlan. We know our starting price point. We have an idea of cost per meter. We have three specific examples, which are good enough even for grandma. Now, let me ask you an obvious question. How do we buy? Do we need to come in with all cash, whether that's from our checking account, home equity line of credit, or retirement funds? Or can we come in with a certain percentage down and get local financing from a bank or credit union? Well, buying is an easy process. But mostly it, must, it means cash on hand. You cannot get loan from a local bank. It is possible maybe in Antigua, Guatemala City, but very difficult in Lake Atitlan. Why? Because mostly the bank and Guatemala are very conservative. If you don't own a bank account, if you don't have a credit experience, well, you won't get any loan. You can get a loan if you get a, a tight property that the bank can estimate uh, worth enough for them to risk maybe to loan you 60% on it. So you, sometimes you can get some uh, financing from the owner. Very often it takes the form of 50% then and the rest finance under one year at local Guatemalan bank rates between 7 and 10% in US dollar. We don't have a screw system like you know it in the US, so you need to work out the timing of the buying in order to have all the party to be comfortable. You have to work definitely with reputable local agent, legally authorized to operate and with notaries that speak English to make the process easier to understand. Be careful of uh, only a virtual uh, real estate agent. In some cases, the property are owned by a shareholder company, which also makes the process easier to go through. Okay, Armand, anyone who has ever owned real estate can tell you, you need to have a money exit strategy in place even before you buy. It's something what I like to call, where's the cheddar? You are buying the property to do what with it to make some money. So Armand, where's my cheddar? Well, my recommendation is look for good deal, not only in terms of price, but location. Quality of the neighborhood, view access, look, all these matter a lot in to contribute to a great strategy exit. Look for something that will make you money also, as it will be a good point at the moment of reselling it. It shows values. 
Look also for quality in construction and layout. If you buy a house already built as a dream house of somebody can be a nightmare for you. Make sure to get the proper legal building authorization and environmental permit. You don't want to be penalized to not have them and nobody is supposed to ignore the law. So be careful. Armand, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to share with us about Lake Atitlan Real Estate. We have heard about your journey, why you chose Guatemala, exact areas of Lake Atitlan to focus on, price points to look out for, specific examples good enough even for grandma, a money strategy to purchase, and then what we might do with it after the fact to make some cheddar. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. But before we do, share with us easy ways to get a hold of you, any parting advice you might want to share, and then let's say goodbye. You can contact me through my website, mainly realestateatitlan.com, through Skype. My Skype uh, name is Armand Boissy, or by phone. My US phone is 305-517-7760, or through my Guatemalan uh, phone, you would have to do calling from the state 001-502-5104-2812. When you decide to come to visit the area, make sure to understand the different areas of interest as the lake offers different places to live that correspond to different lifestyles, more urban versus more in nature. And always remember, Lake Atitlan offers great affordable luxuries at a fraction of the cost you are used with very great lifestyle. Awesome, Armand. I have really enjoyed this conversation straight from Lake Atitlan, Guatemala to our earbuds, and I hope we can catch up again in three to six months. Thanks, Taylor. It has been a pleasure to share experience with you and congratulations. Congratulations on your podcast. Your first great information from local experts as a first hand experience. I want to thank Armand once again for his fantastic take being on the ground in Lake Atatlan. Ask anyone familiar with this special region of the world who they recommend, and all personal recommendations I received led me back to Armand, and I can't wait to get him back on the show again soon with more specific Lake Atitlan real estate investments he believes you need to hear about right now. If you are listening to this podcast and want to grab Armand's contact details, links on buying or selling Lake Atitlan real estate, or any other show notes, head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 15. Do you get excited watching all of these real estate reality shows on TV, but then get really frustrated when you have no way to contact them? Tired of searching for overseas property online, only get stuck in email hell with sales pitch after sales pitch about so-called secrets? Yeah, that makes two of us. Whether you want to hear direct from an agent in Dominical, Costa Rica, a real estate broker in Coronado, Panama, or a highly sought after on the ground insider like Armand, I invite you to join me. Head on over to irelpodcast.com forward slash 15 to get started. You have been listening to the IREL Podcast with Taylor White. Be sure to hit up IRELpodcast.com for more. That's IRELpodcast.com. Thanks for listening.